I think this conversation, I've just been looking forward to it. You know, I think we all could use a night like this one where we're just able to, to celebrate this incredible school and their staff and, you know, how hard they've been working, especially this year. So, Josh, I'm very, very grateful for your time. And, and I've really been looking forward to this conversation. Likewise, thank you. Um, so let's, I guess, let's jump in, I guess. It's so funny because I, you know, normally like it, 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 it's just so weird to be meeting someone for the first time here on Zoom, but um, you know, I, I would love to, to get to know a little bit about you and about Silverback. So, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, Josh. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm a 37 year old parent of three children. I uh, started Silverback in 2016. We're a vertically integrated real estate development company. And we're really focused on building homes, not just apartments or condos. We want to deliver something special that's architecturally distinct. Um, and really, we're, we're proud of what we deliver. And our buildings are kind of like our children in a lot of ways. And they embolden various personality and characteristics that we uh, wove into the design along the way. Yeah, I, it's so funny. As you're speaking, I'm re realizing that the art behind you is a silverback gorilla. It's amazing. What a cool piece. Um, yeah, um, we're all sort of fascinated with the gorilla. I think it's a, it's a very proud animal and humble at the same time. And it's also the leader of its pack, its family. And I'm, I think that's important. I think it's important to be uh, a wise silverback leader when it comes to our civic duties. So I, you know, I, I was just creeping on you a little bit, you know, doing some research before this, this interview. Um, and the way that silverback was founded was really kind of non-traditional in a, in a lot of ways. And I, I, I know it was a very personal journey to you as well. Tell me a little, a little bit about kind of the, the evolution of the company and, and where and who it came from. Sure. So um, it really stemmed from a, a partnership that tried to get off the ground in 2011. And um, in doing and in, in building the company, I um, brought on a partner with a lot of gray hair. And he was sort of everyone's uh, consigliere or mentor or uh, go to adopted grandfather. And uh, his nickname was the Silverback. And um, he was a mentor to me. And he um, was on a scuba diving expedition and never came up for air. Um, and after that, uh, again, two months into a very embryonic company, I was very young, um, had some experience. I think at the time I thought I had more than I really did. And I've learned that along the way. Uh, but this company is really meant to stand by the fact that uh, we are sometimes a teacher, but always a student. And um, we're growing and we're really establishing our core um, fundamentals and sort of our pillars of growth. And, and we're hiring professionals with the same sort of morals um, and, and, and belief in the growth of this company. So yes, it was a very rocky ride. Um, I think he'd be proud as to where it is now. We're expanding, we're building across five states. And, you know, we want to focus on giving back to the communities that we build in. Um, we're actually building next door to the learning spring. So we're really excited about that. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, learning I spring. want to talk about kind of uh, the, the philanthropic part of, of Silverback and your mission and, and maybe how that pays homage to your, to your former partner. But uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about why philanthropy is so important to you. Well, on a personal level, my, my father was a doctor without a border, so to speak. And he would spend his life savings really packing us up for one month out of the year. And we would fly to various countries where he would unpack a suitcase. It'd be all medical supplies. We would get to know the communities that he was visiting. And we would get to watch firsthand as he practiced tropical medicine, as people arrived on foot or by boat or, you know, a dozen people on, in a single car um, traveling miles and miles to see an American doctor. It still would stop traffic in some of the remote provincial regions that we would attend. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to sort of witness that firsthand at a young age uh, was really important to me. And it was actually important to my wife and I as we explored various schools for our children to attend. 
want those same morals to up or pass down. So I now bring a certain experience and skill set to the table as we have our own charity and um, I construct uh, clinics in third world countries or developing nations and my father will staff them. So that's sort of silverback way of giving back, the silverback give back. And um, we can continue to provide first world medical attention to these uh, areas of need. Kindness is just in your DNA. It's, it's part of who you are. It's how you were raised. That's amazing. And then how does Learning Spring School get into the mix here? Is it because you guys are neighbors now downtown? Is that, I mean, how did, how did this kind well, of- Well, we, we are neighbors and um, we're really proud of the work they've done. We've been supporters for a number of years now. So um, I think tonight is about sort of that equality, first and foremost. And I think it's in a year like this that we all need to come together. And, you know, the children are the future and they're the ones who are going to grow from this pandemic. So now's the time to really focus on their needs. I think that that's very profound. And, and I hope you know, and I know you do, but uh, I, let me just reiterate that, you know, the joy that you are bringing to this community of educators and students and their families and this guy on the other side of this Zoom call, it really, it, it means a lot, especially given the past year that we've had. So, you know, I, I hope that your heart is warmed in the same way that you're warming, you know, all of our hearts as well. So thank you, thank you for, for making tonight possible and all of that. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I, I went ahead and said that. Um, talk to me, I mean, we touched on it maybe a little bit and, and uh, you know, what are some of the, who are some of the biggest role models in your life? You know, now we get, we're here tonight, we're celebrating you, we're celebrating Learning Spring, and, and I hope these kiddos can, you know, find a role model in you, and I know that they will. Who are the role models in your life? Who are the people that really continue to inspire you, you know, as you, as, as you go on through, throughout your adult life? Well, uh, um, I think all sort of like warm balls of clay, right? And we're continually molded into the people we are. And um, I think that if we're surrounded by the right teachers, uh, the right mentors, the right role models, um, I think then you sort of uh, can learn to think and run and uh, live a life that's improved, right? Rather than the expression, if you walk long enough with a person with a limp, you'll start walking with a limp too. So I think we always want to elevate ourselves. Um, and, you know, I know I speak about my family. I spoke about my father. Now I'll speak about my mother for a second. She's a, a role model of mine because she's um, one of 13 uh, children, grew up in the Philippines under a one bedroom hut with a mud floor. And she's lost uh, half of her siblings to either disease um, or other various illnesses. So the fact that she's now in America, she has now six grandchildren going on seven. Um, I'd like to think that she's proud of me. I hope that I'm continually making her proud. Uh, that's a role model. That's, you know, someone who hasn't had the sort of challenges that I've had. And we all have relative challenges. Um, but it, it's really a testament that if she can get through that, be on a different continent, and now enjoy love, life, and family, then everything else is, is uh, nominal. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that's, that's always exciting right? That you can really live through any blip. And, you know, I think that charity doesn't require physical presence. I know what we're doing now is definitely difficult, right? And this has been a very tumultuous year. And what I'd like to say to the audience is, while we're not present tonight, um, I would use an analogy where we're sort of during a, during a bumpy ride on an airplane, and you're hitting turbulence, and let's say those masks fall from the ceiling, uh, they tell you to put your max, your mask on first before helping others. And I think that a lot of folks that are listening or benefactors considering donations um, should remember that thankfully we're wearing those masks now and it's time to put them on others around us that badly need that oxygen. I am just, I'm so excited for, you know, whether it's a couple months from now or whatever, and we get to go and like high five these kiddos in the hallway and shake these teachers hands. It's just, you know, because your message is so right on, you know, like we, most of us have our masks on and now we're able to kind of 
help others. And I want to I want to get us all in the same room and just you know let loose a little bit. But but the work that we're doing today will provide for that. You know, in in however many months time it might be. Um, is that you think the takeaway of the night is is to you know now that now that we have our masks on to be able to to I'm. By the way, I love this metaphor. You can tell I'm, I'm running with it. But uh, is that the takeaway of, of the night, you think? To, to Now it's time to put the masks on uh, those that were able to help? I, I think that's a takeaway. I think I'll, I'll leave it with something that sort of my father says. And, you know, we should always go to bed asking ourselves, did we improve our surrounding or the world around us at all today? And if the answer is no, that's okay. There's another day. But tonight's a night where we can all go to bed, I think, and I hope, knowing that we did something today, whether we gave um, a monetary donation, which we encourage, uh, or whether we gave human capital, which is time, and I think that's just as valuable. But tonight, let's all go to bed knowing that we gave back to Learning Spring. Let's ensure that we can high five more children over the next couple of years. And um, let's thrive, even virtually, because the message that we're sending and the good will that we're achieving, that's important. I, I agree with you. Well said, well said, Josh. Uh, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Your, your words of encouragement. I feel like I just sat through like an Oprah masterclass or something. You've got some very wise things to <laughs> say and I'm glad that you said them and I feel better for this conversation. Uh, Josh Schuster. Well, Will, I, I feel like I'm in your kitchen and I, <laughs> look like I, I want a grilled cheese. <laughs> hey, coming right up, coming right up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Josh, for your time. This has been this has been awesome, and and uh, congrats on tonight and and on impacting these these students' lives and these educators' lives. It's you know there there aren't words really, but we'll just leave it with thank you, I guess. Thank you to everybody, the frontline workers, the teachers, and the children. Thank you for your time.